in this video we want to talk more about properties remember we define properties as data that are associated with objects and at this point we want to remind ourselves about how we declare properties within a class it is very simple you simply start with the property scope remember we've been using public all along so we're going to stick with that for now till we discuss the scope of methods and properties. But for now, note that to declare a property, you start with the scope of the property. Yes, it's not like you type the word property scope, but you are going to actually declare the property scope. And this will follow by the name of the property. And that is that for that. Then, if you would want to initialize a property at that point in time, you simply say the property scope, followed by the name you choose to give the property, then equals to a value you choose to assign to the property. And so, you remember in previous tutorials, when we actually created the class test, and within the class test, we created a property and started with the scope as public, and then created a property and then gave our property a name best food after which we instantiated the class with the use class object and then we said we wanted to assign our property a value and then what we did was type the object name pointing to the name of the property best food and then equal to the value in this case my best food has changed from rice to cheese I am never a steady person thank you so much so that being said and done we then print R to ensure that our property and its value is intact and then we place the object name inside of the print how function as its argument just like this so when we save this and refresh this, we actually get this result. This is actually the property with its value. But in reality, this wasn't actually needed here. To be quite honest with you, if we take this off, save this and refresh this, you notice that this still stays intact. So what we are saying here is you really do not have to create a property within a class before you actually set a value to it. You could actually create a class without any property. Then from outside the class, you begin to create your properties and assign them values and make use of them. And they work fine with the class. But stop right there. That is bad practice. Please form the habit of declaring the property right inside the class. Thank you so much for your usual and unusual understanding. <laughs> so something else we can also do is assign the property a value from here. Since you're used to my unsteadiness, I now like beans. I hate cheese now. So I'm just going to comment this out. Then save this and refresh the code. You notice that this changes nicely to beans. And this is very much acceptable. So this is pretty much the basic means by which we create a property and then assign them values either within or outside the class. And at this point we like to talk about constants. You have seen in a previous video where we actually created a constant. You remember that they are values that once created they are constant. They do not change they are not supposed to change so in php when doing object oriented programming we have rules that guide the creation of constants as well within a class so the question to be answered now is how do i declare a constant within a class very simple all you need to do is type the c-o-n-s-t keyword i like calling it const if you may and this will be followed by the constant name all in uppercase then equal to and then you assign it a value now let us see this in action in this code as i'm about to rewrite a program i've written before but this time around we want to do it within a class so i'm going to create a class and i'm going to name this class arithmetic 
Now next up is my curly bracket and in between the curly bracket I'm going to create a constant. So I'm going to type C-O-N-S-T. So what do I actually want to create a constant for? Let me create for pi. And I'm going to set the value to you know what it is. 3.142. So let's give it as simple as that. So at this point, I want to create a static uh, function. Of course, it's not a function. It is a method, but you just cannot take function out of my mouth. So we're actually creating a static method now. And I'm going to name the method circle area. Fair enough. Now within the parenthesis, I'm going to specify the parameter for the radius of the circle. For my calculation to be complete this is not done yet because i now need to say pi times r times r as in pi r square so now the problem is how do i gain access to the value of pi now notice what i will do first things first let me say i want to return return what now we'll introduce a very special self so you say self what will follow self is our wonderful scope resolution operator after which we will then specify the actual name for the constant now this is what gives us access to 3.142 please take very good note of this so this multiplied by our value for the radius multiplied by our value for the radius fair enough this is easy pc remember this is a static method you still remember we access static method now i would like to show you this you don't have to call the class from underneath you can also do it from the top of the class so far you are within the same code so doing this from the top i am going to call the class we don't need to create an object because we want to have access to this static method. So we're going to say the class name followed by our scope resolution operator. And this will follow by the name of the method. In this case, it is circle area. And of course, we will have to supply the radius. And in this case, I'm supplying the radius 5. And this does it. So I'll just save the code and I refresh it. Are we expecting any result? Of course not. Why? Because this method is asked to return and not echo. So we actually have to make use of our initiative to echo this result. So when I save this and actually refresh this, you will notice that we get our result for the area of a circle with radius 5. And this is how simple it is to make use of constants. Remember, we declared the constant here in fact it was initialized after which we created a static method and this was how we were able to gain access to the constant within the method self the scope resolution operator and then the name of the constant it is as simple as this some of you at this point might be like, so object-oriented programming is this easy and simple? Yes, it is this easy and simple. So remember, we are still sticking to the basics. We still have a few more concepts to learn in object-oriented programming using PHP. So as usual and as always, I'm waiting for you in the very next video.